Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to Volin Lutsk and our journeyman save. Uh, we are picking up where we left off last episode, season review time. <laughs> so we have not advanced any time yet for those new leagues to come online. So still not sure what we're going to do. Uh, let's get into it. Taking a look at the season that was 2051-2052. We had some new arrivals come in, and if we sort them by average rating, uh, we brought in Alexander Smirnov, thinking he's a vodka uh, a vodka drinker, personally. 19-year-old fullback, 3.65 million, made uh, 14 appearances, three goals, nine assists for Volin 2, a uh, younger player, but he played really well, and he might be looking to make a jump to the senior squad next year. Mustafa Mendy, 18-year-old attacking fullback, cost $5.03 million, eight appearances, two goals, one assist. Again, a solid rating for him. And taking a look, he is a left back and possibly ready for next year. We'll see. It may not even matter. So we've got a right back and a left back in there. Uh, Taylor Furlong, signing of the season. I guess we need to go through the grades. So Smirnov, we got a B-minus grade. Mindy, a B-minus. Taylor Furlong, we got a C-plus. 23-year-old fullback, came to us from Man United. $850,000. 19 appearances, 2 assists. Solid rating. And he is a left back and center back. And you can see... He's pretty good. Three-star current, four-star potential. I'm not sure Smirnoff's going to unseat him. Terrace Lyoka, 26-year-old winger, a B-minus grade. Cost of $6.37 million from Circle Bruges. And 28 starts, two sub-appearances, six goals, 11 assists, 7.01 rating. Very, very solid at the right wing for us. My... Masayuki Teruya, he was our number 10, wasn't he? 3.67 million attacking midfielder. We got a D grade on him, uh, but it's basically due to the salary too high for his place in the squad. 17 appearances, 5 goals, 2 assists, just under a 7. I don't think he played poorly. And yeah, he's a number 10 and a midfielder. Really good passer. You know what? They need to just back off of the little kid. Uh, well, he's 23. He's not a little kid. And Simon Lucas, 21-year-old striker. And we got a B-minus grade on him. Nine starts, two goals, six, seven, eight. He is out on loan currently. But you can see he's pretty solid as well. Four and a half star potential. So that's what's going on there. That was the transfers in. On the transfers out... I guess we'll sort these from best to worst. Uh, Kravchenko, 35 years old. Uh, we sold him on for $3.99 million. We got a C grade on that. Andre Pretsov is a 18-year-old fullback, 554000 And we got a C grade on him. Yuri Simic, we got a B-minus grade. Got $8.5 million as he went to Cor uh, Kornomaretz. Yes. And uh, Yano Spidor, 25-year-old fullback, got a C-plus grade. We picked up $3.4 million for him. Andre Hammer, I uh, guess it's Hammer, 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 17-year-old midfielder, $981,000, B-minus grade on him. Uh, Denis, uh, DL Pro, $14.7 million for Kamziuk. I uh, really didn't like to get him, but... Uh, a decent sell-on percentage clause included in that. Uh, don't remember exactly how much, but I've been asking for at least 20 to 25 percent minimum uh, for these guys. Uh, Rares Marar center back go, goes off to Mikhailov for 900,000. We got a C grade there. Gaverluk a D. He was a young player, but and he went on a free. Didn't get a transfer fee. Dmitriev, 390000 Shapak, 459000 Nikita Isev, $5.16 So 
quite a few big transfers out this year. Moments to remember. Well, the board expected top half. We finished second, so success. We had 89% attendance at home, 10,700 fans. I think we hold just over 12,000, if I remember. Carlos Vera was the competition top scorer with 20, and I had an A- minus from the board in the grade. As you can see, 30 games, 21 wins, 4 draws, 5 losses, and we finished 10 back of Shakhtar, and we did end up qualifying by 5 points for uh, Champions League next year, so that's good. Moments to remember, the big win, 9-2 over Velge in the Euro Cup. A 5-1 win in the Premier League over Zoria and an 8-1 win over Borskla was the goal of the season that came from Carlos Vera. A free kick from the edge of the area. Currently, three-star national reputation. That stays the same. No new sponsorship deals at this point. Uh, we did go up a little bit in sponsorship money, about 160000 in broadcast revenue. A little increase in corporate and hospitality, three million more in competition prize money for the higher finish, so that's nice. And we went up about forty thousand on match day commercial. Picked up nine hundred and twenty-six thousand in merchandising. Sold sixty-eight hundred jerseys led by Teruya. Yes, we sold a lot of jerseys over in uh, in Asia and Japan specifically. Vera number two, Bidney number three. Kuczynski and Lyolka round out the top five kit sales. Primarily played this 4-3-1-2 most of the season. And there's a look at our starting 11 for the most part and how they fared. Robinson just off the seven mark. Camps just below it. And uh, Kamziuk was uh, probably the worst of the bunch. But he had a pretty good season as well. I didn't pick up the head coach of the year, I don't believe. In the club, Carlos Vera was the fans player of the season and the goal of the season. Signing of the season was Taylor Furlong and Anton Radanev was the young player of the season. In competitions, Carlos Vera was the Ukrainian Premier League top goal scorer and new record set at the club this year. Vera with 32 goals across all competitions. Four goals in one match, set a new record, and a league record in the same game. And Pavel Heidenreich, 19 shutouts, uh, a new clean sheet record for him. I uh, hope you enjoyed the look back on last season. Pretty successful season for us, all things considered. Uh, taking a quick look, I've been kind of tracking a couple of jobs. We've got a lot of uh, national jobs open. Uh, Brazil, Belgium, and I've never managed international, but not looking to do that right now. Uh, nothing has really caught my attention up here. Uh, Willem did a little bit, but my other save is in the Arida VC. I don't want to go back to the Netherlands in the same, you know, at the same time. Uh, the ones that are getting my attention, not Real Madrid. I don't think that's a Bielsa style job, but. Uh, Bachum, Bachum in Germany, that's a possibility. Ver, uh, uh, Werder in Bundesliga 2, because they just got relegated and they've been kind of bouncing back and forth. I think that would be a possibility. I'm still looking at the Leeds job, but even though that's showing up insecure, I think that's a new hire. And because he's not even showing up with a start date yet. So I don't think that'll go in until the season starts. I mean, he shows up as the head coach, but there is no date. So it's not saying he's a deputy or, you know, just a fill-in. Uh, he's, he's not an interim. So I don't know what, I don't know what that is. Um, so maybe it doesn't officially register until the first match of the season. That's kind of what I'm wondering. I'm wondering. So anyway, that's what's going on on the job front. Uh, odds are, as we talked about, if nothing came up prior to the start of the season, 
I probably don't worry about a job. We do another year here at Bolin, and then we kind of look next year now that all these other leagues are online. Spain, France, Germany, England, you know, they're all they're all back up. So maybe that's the game plan. We'll just go a year at Bolin. I'm still looking at those jobs if they come available here in the next week or two before the season officially starts. Let's get into transfers. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, first off, well, we'll look at finances later. <laughs> so we have sold, and I need to go back to last year, I guess. So at the end of last season, we sold Jan Fidrich, 2.4 million going up to 3.3. And then uh, we didn't bring anybody else in. So he was one of our right wingers, three star. Uh, we got rid of him. And then this year, starting at the beginning of this month, we got an offer on Anton Radanov from Wren. And it's for 18 and a quarter million. I couldn't pass that up. I mean, 18 million. I don't know. What's he valued at? I mean, it's more than his value. And he wasn't valued at that much at our club. So. Uh, came through our system, good player, starting center back, hated to lose him. But, you know, I just couldn't pass up $18 million. So he is gone. Uh, Vladislav Clements goes off for $1.4 million. Clements, we, we uh, came up in our system as well, had a value below seven fifty. I'm pretty sure. And... Right back, not a bad player. Ratings look really good, but you can see he's only a 51 rating. He's only the sixth best right back at our club. So not going to play. Let's clear some dead weight out of the team and make some money on him. And we made a profit, so move on. Pavlo Savoric goes off to KKR for $1.5 million. Uh, he was also a youth prospect with us. Now, he's younger. He's 18. We had him, well, they've listed him for loan. That's funny. But, again, you can see only a 27 rating. Decent ra decent numbers, but no pace or acceleration, no stamina. That kind of takes him out of the Bielsa mold. Even with the good finishing and whatnot, I figured we could cut bait with him. And we made a little bit of money. Uh, then we moved uh, uh, Kvartsiani out on loan. Dwight Delesha, we had loaned him out last year. Two years ago, he was in the mix as uh, coming off the bench at the striker position. But we sold him for 3.6, going up to five and a quarter. And all of these add-ons are all attainable. There's nothing really weird. Most of them have some kind of sell-on, 30 to 40%. But they all have, uh, most of them have, uh, <laughs> you know, the base amount plus after 50 games and you know then a set fee for each game that they play for the first 10 or 20 games and that's the bulk of the money so outside of the sell-on fee all of these are going to be very attainable uh, uh semantic and buskin go out on loan and crystal palace premier league team they came in on heidenreich at you know late in the window just a couple of days ago, and met his release clause. I immediately went in, tried to offer him a new deal, because he was signed through 2055. Didn't want to talk to us, wanted to deal with Palace. Uh, I thought we had gotten a reprieve, because we got an email saying there was a holdup on his work permit, and they, they got the uh, appeal, and uh, so he took off. I looked at a couple of keepers, now, Heidenreich's 25, 9.75. I found two keepers I was very interested in. Neither one of them were homegrown. Uh, they were both going to be foreign players. And they were younger, around 22. But one club wanted $11 million and the other club wanted $17 million, uh, as a fee. And I said, I'm not going to pay double what I just sold you know, one of the best keepers in our, in the Premier League here to sign them. We've got, we've got some depth, young, inexperienced, 
But I think they're going to be able to do the job for us. I hope. Fingers crossed. We do have a little transfer window time left. So if we start off sluggish, especially in goal, I may be spending some money. Not like I don't have 11 million or 18 million to go spend. On the incoming, we bring in Bruno from Pex for 500,000. He is a midfielder, five star potential, three star current. He is Brazilian with 520 caps and an international goal for Brazil's U20 team. 18 years old, and he looks good. He looks good. Uh, he's probably going to be the starting midfielder, and especially if we go with. Uh, I've brought back an old tactic, the 4-3-3 with the deep defensive mid, two midfielders, two attacking wingers, one up top. But I also have the same tactic that we had last year with a number 10 and then two up top and two in the midfield. So, or three in the midfield. Yes. Uh, so he, he could fit in there. Uh, he could challenge for the number 10 spot but I think he'd be my number two choice there behind our Japanese player, Lyoka. I think it's Lyoka. Maybe not. Terusa or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, Bruno comes in for 500000 He's going to be around the first team. Uh, Karabatic uh, comes in on a free from Dynamo. He's 19, goalkeeper, pretty solid, and he's the one that has four-and-a-half star potential. Not quite ready to play today. I want him to play in our U21s and play every minute <laughs> and get a season under his belt there, hopefully develop a little bit. And But he's probably our keeper of the future, if I'm being honest. So we brought him in on a free. Uh, Kravinko comes in from Desna for $1.8 million. Left winger. Look at the crossing. We haven't had crossing that good. Most of our wide players have crossings of like seven or nine. So this is huge. I'm excited to see what he can do. And you can see in three friendlies, one goal, one assist, and a 7.3 rating. Valued at $3 million. Very excited to get him, uh, especially at you know almost half value. Uh, Yuri Vasera comes in from Sigma Olamok. 3.6 million. He is going to be a striker for us, and he is going to replace Robinson in the starting starting rotation. Robinson will move to the bench, and Robinson had a pretty good year last year. But look at the numbers on this guy. Five-star potential, two-and-a-half star. He's got nine caps under 21 for Czechoslovakia. Pace, stamina. Really, the only thing that lets him down even remotely is first touch. But he's got stellar finishing, composure, decision-making, really good. Teamwork, work rate. I'm excited to see what this guy's going to do. Still looking for his first goal. Uh, and, you know, not, not th these U21s were not with us. But three friendlies, two off the bench, 6.9 rating. Partnering him up with Vera, I think he is going to be okay. Might need a year to bet in. We'll see. Selling Radinov. I wanted to address our back line. Veslin Kula comes in for $1.2 million. He could play all three back line positions. Six foot one. Pace. Uh, good strength. Marking. Tackling are outstanding. Heading is at least decent, and he's got five star potential. And I think he's going to be in. Playing a 7.05 in two starts already, and I think he'll be one of our two starting center backs. Now, we do have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, let's take a look at the incoming. Uh, we've offered a contract on a number 10. Uh, he's 19. High, you know, high fee, but very low salary. This guy's more for the future. Tim Abb, same thing. He's going to join us midseason. Uh, we did pay a lot for him, but uh, again, pretty solid numbers, and we had we had some cash to burn. And when you go from what I'm finding in the Ukraine, 
when you're going from Eastern Europe into West, more Western Europe countries, the cost just skyrockets. It's one reason I haven't gone after English players. So expensive to get them here. And most of our guys are on, you know, let's see, our highest guy. We've, we've got four players making over 100000 One of them's from England. That's one of the guys we brought in this year. One's from Japan. And the other two guys are just valued. I mean, look at Bidney. Valued at $15.5 million. So outside of that, we've got a lot of guys under 60000 The bulk and a lot are down in the $30,000 range. Even Vera, as good as he is, is only making fifty three five. And he's valued at almost $13 million. So when I go out and I start looking at these guys and they're starting off at $150,000, $200,000 a month, I'm like, I can't afford that. You know, I mean, I don't want to pay that. So we're, we're not going to go crazy. Um, on this guy, we paid more in the fee, but we got him at a very affordable salary so uh, that's the good thing right there uh, those are our two uh, one incoming one we're working on both are future projects uh, pal we've gotten a couple of uh, offers for we've rejected him because he's going to start the season as our uh, as our starter as our number one uh, stoica we tried to sell him for 1.4 he rejected it he is still on the transfer list uh, in fact I'm going to move him to the Bolin 2 squad because I don't want him around the first team. He's not good enough. So he's there if we need to bring him up. Uh, Mustafa Mendy, we got an offer for seven and a quarter million. Uh, he's 18 years old from Senegal, and we paid five million for him. So we could make our money back, but he's five star potential. I think he's good enough to play now. He's got one start, one bench appearance with a 7.1 rating. His crossing needs to go up, but you can see just the little bit he's played already this year, a lot of his numbers are trending in the right direction. So that's good, and I didn't want to sell him. If they come back at you know, 15, 16, 15 to 20 million, I probably won't say no. Uh, let's see, Oliver uh, Alexander Chevetz, uh, we've got 10 offers on him uh, for... I think these are loan, right? Yeah, these are loans, so no big deal for him. Mike Vandenberg. This is going to be an interesting one. Uh, we started getting offers around the $2 million mark, and I started negotiating, and then as I'd get new, new offers at a higher value, I would, I would cancel the other offers. And so you can see a lot of rejected. These were originally accepted and then cut back. So, you know, we went from 3.9 to 4 to 5, 5.5, five and, and now we're up to 5.5 and 6.5. And and In fact, I need to cancel that one. 6.5 um, is his release clause. And you know what? He's a good player. He's a very good player. But he's so far down our depth chart right now. I think he's sixth. I don't know why I can't click on this. But anyway, he's down around six on the depth chart. I've got two younger players, I think a 19 and a 20-year-old, that are in front of him with five-star potential. I think he's four-star, four-and-a-half star. So I said, you know, if they meet his release clause, I'm going to go ahead and take it. So he had one deal lined up, and then right before he signed, the club went into um, – um, Oh, crap. I guess there's a buyout of the club, so they, they're on a transfer embargo. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, so they had to cancel, and, but a lot of other teams have come in for him, and Garushka is on a loan as well. I like him. 18 years old. Need to get him out there. But you can see a lot of these sell-on clauses. We've got nine clauses available right now. So that's the transfers. If we take a look at our team report right now, I only want to look at the first team. So uh, we've got Zomb uh, Zombor Pal, Romanov, and Carol in goal. Uh, all of them are young. 
Uh, Powell was our deputy last season. Carroll has a little more upside than Powell, I think, if we go off of potential. Okay, no, they're right there. But then we have that younger guy in uh, the U21s that we just signed on the free. He's four and a half star. I think he's going to be better in the long run. But I think Powell's going to improve just from playing, and I think we'll see his ability start to go up. So we're going to let Powell and Carole probably challenge it out uh, here at the start of the season. Uh, we've got Mindy on the left side, Kula, Furlong backing him up. Furlong's not going to be happy about that because I signed him initially to be a starter. Uh, Kula and Makarenko, Furlong, Makarov, Romanenko in the middle. And on the right side, Kula is there, but Kula is going to be a center back for us. Tarasenko, Makarenko, Bidney are on the right side. On the left wing, we've got Kruczynski and Kravinko. Ab is already on there, five-star potential, but he's the one, you know, future. Oh, that's potential. Hold on, let's go back to current. My bad. Uh, so Furlong is there, but, uh, you know, I'm going to probably start Mindy over there. Uh, sorry about that. The cats were going crazy. So I'm probably going to start Mindy out there. Uh, we have Bindi. Uh, Binyi is our captain. Kula, I want to play uh, in there. Uh, Mazarenko, Tarasenko on the right side. Lyoka is going to start on the right wing with Carabella backing him up. That's really the only place we're light. Uh, we have Mazarenko, Teruya, Bruno in that midfield. But Teruya, he's the Japanese guy. I think he's 22, 23, 23. Uh, Philip Camps, I think Teruya is going to get the start over him this year. I like Camps a lot, you guys know, but he's 30. Uh, he is our uh, vice captain, but I think I'm going to go with ten, uh, t uh, Tanuya. Tanuya. Uh, I think I'm going to go with him there this year with Camps coming off the bench. Uh, Bruno Mazarenko are going to compete in that central mid. Uh, Krachinski, Kravinko on the left wing, and we have Vera, Robinson, Camps. Uh, Mikhailov, not really. He's more of a winger guy uh, or a number that number 10. So, in fact, I'm going to pull him out of there. And that brings uh, Likes. Garushka's out on loan, I think. We've got an offer on him. The one guy that's not on there is Becerra, and I think he's going to play a lot. I want to start him. I think he is going to start because if we look at potential here, well, potential it says start Lucas Meyer, damn it, uh, which that's possible. Maybe we need to do that. Look how far Vera drops down the pecking order. But, uh, you know, maybe I need to go with Meyer or Luke, Lucas. I don't know. Vasera is going to definitely be in the mix. Uh, Garkushka we've loaned out or we're loaning out. So Meyer, Lucas, Vasera, Vera, those are going to be our main guys uh, that we're going to be playing up there. Rob, and then that still leaves me Robinson. Holy crap. Uh, Four-star potential. and. He's going back to the bench, I think. But that's uh, so. That's what the club looks like this year. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the incoming guys. Am I making the right call with the goalkeepers? Don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to play them. We'll see how the season starts. If they really struggle, I will rotate them. If they struggle, I'll give them a cut. I'll give each one a you know two three game run, and you know as long as the transfer window's open. Uh, you know, I'll turn around and drop some money. Uh, it's also possible that, you know, maybe I have to wait till till January, the midseason, to do that. But I think we're stacked up at striker. I don't know who to put on the bench. And if I only play a one striker system, I'm going to have some unhappy people. But uh, I'm looking forward to some of the new players coming in. Uh, Mindy, Kula. Uh, again, we you know, we're, we didn't sell... A ton of players, but we did make some big sales. And most of the guys, Radnov was one I just couldn't turn down. And everybody else, Heidenreich I didn't want to sell. I didn't have a choice because of the reserve clause, release clause. The other guys, three other players, were all way down the pecking order and not really part of the first team. So I don't view that as cutting 
ties and not being loyal. Now we've got new guys coming in and I've got to figure out how they're going to slot in. So pretty excited to start the season. Uh, if we take a look at the competition, they want us in the top half, competitive in the Champions Cup, reach the semifinals in the uh, Ukrainian Cup, and the Super Cup not important, which is probably good because we're playing Shakhtar, who owned us last year. They owned everybody last year. But if we look at the league and the season preview, they've got us picked to finish 7th. Uh, pretty strong in the mix, 20 to 1, but we'll see. So we should definitely finish top half, uh, and that's the goal. Anything better is gravy. And how much money do we get for that? It doesn't give me the doesn't give me the monies. Oh, where does it show the money? I don't know. I know we get money. Oh well. All right. Well, that's it, guys. Um, barring anything unforeseen, I mean, the league starts in three days. So, barring anything unforeseen, I don't see any of those jobs coming available that we looked at at the beginning. So I'm, I'm prepared to settle in at Bolin for this season, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. Hit that like button, subscribe. I'm interested in your feedback. And, uh, oh, shout out to, uh, I want to give the right name, Old Lady Plays. Uh, she just started following me recently and uh, featured me in one of her videos. So shout out to her. Check out her channel, Old Lady Plays. And uh, she does F football manager stuff. But um, I've been complaining a lot about my players and their crossing ability, always going into the legs of defenders, just not being able to open that gap. And she, you know, she points out that that happens a lot. And my, my response is, I don't recall that happening in football manager in previous versions. Now, maybe it's part of the new match engine and it's just, you know, kind of like the old goalkeeper where there's limited graphics, um, you know, but just a poor cross effort. I mean, I don't see that a ton. I mean, we are the top league in the Ukraine. You'd think the talent would be there that, you know, it may not always go where you want it and it may not always go in the net. That's not what I'm looking for, but to always have, to have, 80 or 90 percent blocks at the at the point of cross attempt i still think that's weird maybe i'm off base here but you know she did give me another point of view and uh, i do appreciate it so maybe she's right and i'm just way out in left field uh, you guys weigh in in the comments uh, not starting a war between her and i don't do that uh, but because i do appreciate her chiming in with some thoughts because I have been complaining about it an awful lot. Well, guys, we will talk to you. Have a good one. Bye.